My guest today is Sarah Ben Amran. Sarah, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Happy Friday. Thanks Happy for having Friday me, David. It's Friday. Yeah, <laughs> you forget? Rest day of the week. <laughs> what do you do, Sarah? Uh, I am an industry cloud architect for sustainability, which really just means that I am a sustainability subject matter expert, uh, particularly when it comes to carbon accounting and the Microsoft first party services, the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability and the umbrella of products under that platform. I like the way you went from the broad to the kind of specific. Uh, you gotta, let's, you gotta. <laughs> let's start with the broad. The word sustainability is an overloaded term or it means a lot of different things to a lot of people. What, uh, in this context, what do you mean when you say sustainability? Yeah, yeah. And that's a really great point because even when I talk about sustainability and I tell people about my job, they, they start asking me all about recycling. And I'm like, that's not my area of expertise. Yeah, uh, so sustainability. It's just not, <laughs> it's just not where you're yeah exactly. So really, in, in the concept that we're going to talk about it today, we're going to talk about it in the context of carbon measurement and the greenhouse protocol measurement system. So really, what does the emissions that get released into the environment, where do they come from? How are they calculated and measured? And how do we report on them? Okay, uh, and what does that mean in terms of Microsoft? Microsoft has, uh, we made some sort of commitment to sustainability. Like, like we've uh, made quite a few. numbers, right? Yeah, we've made quite a few. Uh, so we've been on, on a decade long journey where we started with just on internal systems commitments all the way to them building solutions and now tool sets for people to leverage and right now we have a commitment to be carbon negative zero waste and water positive by 2030 and we also have a commitment to go beyond removing all the emissions we produce and being carbon negative by 2030 and also remove all of the historical emissions that we've emitted since the company was founded by 2050. That's really ambitious. Very, very ambitious. So we realize we can do that on our own, which is why we're looking to partner with our ecosystem and created all these tool sets for others to come along the journey with us. Okay. Well, tell me some of the things that Microsoft and uh, Microsoft's partners are doing to achieve this goal. Yeah, we have a, a, a big partner ecosystem, which is really what's coming into to favor for us in this in this in this perspective. The sustainability problem when it comes to carbon measurement is a data problem at the end of the day, because you have to account for emissions, not just inside of your reporting company operations, but upstream and downstream emissions from engagement with manufacturer, vendors, suppliers, as well as what happens after you produce a product or a service with customers. So you need to partner with those entities, right? And a lot of like the data sharing needs to happen, particularly when it comes to the consumption data that then leads to emissions generation. So we have built a cloud for sustainability, the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability as part of our industry cloud products. And I want to clarify when we say that, it doesn't mean that we've built a separate data center. It's still the same known and love Azure and Dynamics and M365, like same products known and love. We've just built vertical offerings inside of those. And we're bringing this container of industry cloud solutions to represent the growing set of ESG capabilities that we are building as first party, as well as those third party solutions with a common data model, as well as specifically identified um, solutions and products that are accelerating the sustainability engagement. Okay, so these are services in, that are offered within Azure, kind of like uh, what databases or application services or machine learning services are offered in Azure. There are some that are very specific to Yeah, we have, we have a sustainability data model that sits on Dataverse. That's number one, that's kind of like underlying everything. And we have right now a couple of things, but the main, main, main one today, and the most important for people to know about is our sustainability manager. Um, that's an emissions management system. Uh, think of it as a CRM for your emissions, ERP for your emissions. It is a power app, really, that we built on top of that data model that has the data capture service through Power Query, although you can also set up connections through, like, let's say, like Data Factory. 
Um, it has a calculation service, so you actually can do the calculation from raw consumption to emissions, and it has a reporting service to actually export out that data and keep track of goals um, and measure your progress on carbon and being carbon negative. Who's the target audience for using this service? For sustainability manager, uh, enterprise, corporate, SMC, like those type of accounts. Um, and from a partner ecosystem, we're talking really um, a lot of our SaaS providers, uh, a lot of our governance partners on, on the reporting end, reporting providers. Uh, really think of it as like from the data ingestion, we're talking operations and value chain type of data. So anybody who plays in that space. And from the ecosystem on the insights and reporting, report providers, government partners, or partner solutions that might further down those analytics to take action to reduce emissions. Well, interesting. So are, are we are we recording just emissions from cloud services? Or are we, no. doing, are we doing it like, let's say I'm an automobile manufacturer. Am I also using this service to record the, the carbon emitted by the factories that I have all over the world? You nailed it, the second one. So that's a really great question. So if it's just about the Azure emissions or the M365 emissions, we have dashboards that make that data available to our customers. And we actually are, are working on a API for that Azure data initially um, that we announced back in our Ignite conference. The sustainability manager is looking at your entire value chain. So we're talking about the activities inside of the company but we're also talking about everything that happens before and everything that happens after. So think of, for example, when Microsoft sells an Xbox device and a user takes that home and plugs it in and they're consuming electricity, that's part of our scope three downstream emissions. Um, and then upstream emissions, we're talking about things, let's say like business travel or the employee commuting, um, capital goods, purchase goods and services, all of that, that it's upstream activities to the company. Interesting. So if we can make an Xbox more efficient or, or emit less uh, yeah. pollution, then we're going faster toward our goal of being carbon negative by 2030. 100%. And our Xbox team has actually done amazing stuff on that space. I'm not super deep on that one, but we it, it's definitely an area of, of interest as well. I think if I understand this correctly, the whole idea behind this uh, emissions management system in the cloud for sustainability for our partners to use is that it's not going to solve the problem, but it'll make them aware of what where the issues are. It'll, Correct. It'll, like, that, that they're collecting that data so then they can take action to maybe reduce correct. emissions where it's necessary. Is that right? Correct, correct. Because you can track what you can measure, right? So if you are a chief sustainability officer or really any role in an organization that's tasked with achieving uh, those KPIs, those goals of, hey, we committed to being carbon negative, carbon neutral, carbon net zero. How do you do that? You need to create a baseline. You need to start measuring your emissions to then track progress. Otherwise, it's really like brainwashing and you're not really like, why would you make certain investments? How do you how do you know that you're making the right decisions towards those goals? Yeah. Yeah, I like this, uh, the mission Chief Sustainability Officer. That's a job that didn't exist a decade ago. Yeah, I know. I mean, my job didn't exist two years ago. Well, tell me about yeah. your job. Now, what, what part are you playing in this? Yeah, so um, I act as a loaned resource from Microsoft, specifically from our global partner solutions team, our partner organization. And I work with our partner ecosystem to bring those solutions to market, uh, to help them build offerings that either implement our sustainability manager, expand, extend, or integrate with it. So I partner with ISB services uh, to do those offerings. It's a lot of um, teaching them about the carbon accounting, greenhouse gas measurement, but it's also a lot about teaching them over the specific depth uh, of the technicality of the product, like how to customize the data model, how to extend the data model in Dataverse, um, how to package a solution that extends a power app, those sort of things. Okay, I'm curious if the people you're talking to, are they coming to you and saying, we need to be more um, sustainable, uh, help us do that, or are you selling that to them and trying to convince them? No, I, I, my door is knocked on so much that I get triple booked, like quadruple booked. Um, really, we need more people doing my job, to be honest. And I am finding 
more and more ways to scale. Um, it, the, the reality is because sustainability is a horizontal, it's not constrained to a certain industry. So it goes across every partner. It goes across every customer. And they all want to have that conversation. I can't tell you how often I have been pulled in last minute, really, because even our account team hadn't even thought of talking about sustainability or they thought, oh, we can talk about it. But they were maybe allocating an hour and the past, the, the partner, the customer, they wanted to spend the entire day talking about it because it's such a priority. Yeah. I, I, so there are uh, companies, they recognize that they want to do this. This is important to them. Their challenge is how. They don't know how. Yes. And that's where you yes. come. That's your job. Mm -hmm. 100%. You got it. So uh, what else? Is there something we haven't talked about that we should? Um, well, we haven't talked about the industry scenarios that we're considering. So what we mean by that is when we look at sustainability, um, as I mentioned, it's horizontal, right? So if we're talking sustainability for financial services, it's a very different story than if we were talking about sustainability for manufacturing or retail, right? There will be different use cases and scenarios that are, make more sense or are more relevant. That being said, there are still across the horizontal, if we look at an organization, some core sustainability challenges that we are focusing on when we bring our own first party solution, as well as when we work with our partners, their third party solutions to market. Um, there are four priority scenarios that we look at to accelerate that sustainability growth and journey. The very first one is unifying data intelligence, which is what we talked about before. It's a data problem, right? So we need to do data integration and calculation, reporting, disclosure, and automated insights. And it goes across the, the entire organization. You have to collect data from procurement, from business travel, from all your vendors, suppliers. So solutions that unify that data intelligence. That's also where our sustainability manager plays a role. It's where a lot of our services consultant partners play a role. Um, that one honestly goes across the horizontal. It's like you have to tackle that one before you can tackle the other three. The other three priority scenarios, we have having a green IT, reducing environmental impact of operations. So this one actually goes back to what you talked about before with the cloud emissions, for example. This is all around workload migration to the cloud and the efficiency of the of, of those workloads running on Azure, we actually have just released at Ignite the sustainability um, guidance for the well-architected framework that's meant to do just that, like help uh, the IT teams improve the sustainability uh, impact of their workloads running on Azure. Uh, that also includes responsible devices, which Surface has a great story there as well. Um, that I, I don't want to go too deep into that because we don't have too much time. But that's a, that's kind of what we think about when we're thinking about like green IT. Um, and then the other two, the last two, one is creating a sustainable value chain, which is all about increasing transparency in that value chain. Again, we're talking about that upstream and downstream vendors, suppliers, manufacturers. What happens after you? like visibility and, tra and, tra and, transpar and transparency of that value chain and that data. And then the, the last one is really reducing the environmental impact of your operations. So it's optimizing your operations for sustainability. Think of things like energy management and improvement there. Think of smart spaces, like smart facilities, and think of collaboration and planning, really. That's interesting. I, you know, in my mind, we start talking about carbon emissions and different industries, I think of manufacturing as the one, the biggest challenge. Yes. Because they have factories and they're, pushing, they, they're uh, often into smokestacks on top of them. Yeah. But uh, at talking to you, I realized that other industries may have huge impact because their salespeople may be just flying all over the world. They have nothing to manufacture. But every time they get on a plane, there's a carbon impact. Correct. When they do that. Or they may be buying things from some other company. Uh, maybe it's an offshore company from a country that doesn't have environmental regulations, and therefore yep. they're spewing pollution because there's there's no one to stop them. Um, yeah, and, this realization uh, is something complex, everybody comes on. Yeah, it's a much yeah. more complex issue than I, I realized just a half hour ago. Uh, even me, when I first was asked to take on the role, was just because I was doing it as a hobby. Um, I had been learning about it a little bit. I was helping out here and there. 
Uh, but even at that point in time, it was purely more on how do you optimize your workloads for like sustainability? Um, and how, what are some of the regulatory like implications of that? Um, and then I was asked to take the run full time. And when I did, I learned all of these. <laughs> like I did not know, like, I did not even know like the, the, the beginning of it until I really got into the job. And, and there's still so much more that I'm still learning, to be honest. Oh, that's great that you've learned it because a lot of people that are watching this, I'm sure they're completely unaware of it. Where's a good place to start to learn about uh, sustainability in general and Microsoft's efforts in that in particular? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have released some external assets that people can go through and learn. Um, and we're bringing more out as we continue to update the product and as well as we add new services or capabilities under the cloud for sustainability. So if people go on solutions.microsoft.com, there, there is a sustainability section. And under that sustainability section, we have a tab for learning resources and readiness. They're going to find, right now, I believe we have three modules in there. Two of those are LinkedIn learning modules that people can go through. And the third one is a learning module in our Microsoft Learn website. I, see. I just went there. It looks like I have to log in in order to get to solutions.microsoft.com. Um, is that available to everyone? Or uh, it should be. If it's not, then you can just go directly on LinkedIn Learning or on Microsoft Learn and look up for sustainability and find those modules. Um, the solutions of Microsoft.com just has all three in one place, but you can find them independently as well. Sarah, thank you so much. I've learned a great deal in the last few months. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, and yeah, looking forward to seeing this live and hopefully other people want to learn more about sustainability and bring me back. Who knows? Bye friends. Thank you so much for learning about sustainability and technology with me and David today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new and looking forward to you guys watching more episodes and learning more about technology with David.